at any rate, <laughs> at any rate, um, if you think about the history of your own lives and you start thinking relationally, probably the first relationship that you will not remember would be uh, within your mother. And uh, there's some things that happen uh, late in that period of time which, which could make a difference in some of your early relational processing. So you have a relationship and if we think about you as being involved and as a, a bundling, if you will, of your emotions. Uh, oh. I didn't mean that. I'm moving over this to you now. Yeah, you can sit behind. <laughs> um, that you think of yourself as a, a, a sort of a coming together of your emotional, well, relational life. And so let's say that this is a sphere that represents your history of a relational life with your mom. And then you have, let's say, with your father and your siblings. Let's say you have a couple of siblings. And you also have relationships with your early neighbors and little friends. And you have relationships maybe in church or synagogue or mosque or wherever else you may go to have religious experience. And, and you may, in fact, through your prayers, have a relationship with Jesus or with uh, some other, your saints, your guardian angel if you have one. And then you may go to school and have a series of teachers and friends. So you are all wrapped up as a, an involver in relational processes. And, and I wanted to avoid saying a, an outcome because you were constantly participating in your relational processes. So you were co-creating with others your, your ways of being in the world. And so some of them are probably highly practiced, highly developed, and others are a little bit lighter. So there are some that are very heavy in your life and others not. Also in your life, are your textual friends, as I mentioned before. I mean, is Cinderella important in your life, or Snow White, or Rapunzel, or uh, the heroes of the round table, the <coughs> Wonder Woman was the character <laughs> I really enjoyed in my early life. What? Heidegger. Heidegger? No, I do not. I suppose there's rejecting relationships, too. You know. <laughs> it could be. You liked Heidegger? No. Uh, so, now, that does not say what happens when we get together. And this is another part that I find quite interesting, and that is that when you meet another, this other is similar to you. Let's say this is a younger person with fewer options. And you come together here. And, and this, this image that we developed, we, we often call it the butterfly, which is a way of describing the relational process of getting together with another person. Or it could be an animal. Uh, it could be, I don't know what else it could be, but that, that's, that's a possibility. How many ways can you relate? to a dog, a cat. And so when you get together with this other creature, let's say it's a seven-year-old child, you have to come into the relationship with offerings, if you will, the offering that you have acquired through your past relational experiences. You begin something. And then the other engages with you. And then you reply, and you begin to create what, which will eventually be another ring, if you will, in your relational repertoire. So through your various engagements with others, you develop capacities, ways of making fun of things, or 
sarcasm or spiritual talk or actions as well. How to engage in a tea ceremony or to do a modern dance movement or uh, yoga, to do yoga and how you should engage. When we lived in Japan, I, I somehow, because a friend of mine wanted to, I took a, a, about a year of flower arranging. And the teacher spoke no English and I spoke really no Japanese. And so I was there with all these young women who were learning flower arranging. They were engaged to be married and that's one of their tasks to learn to do that. And we could not engage in the usual way in which one might engage because we had no shared language. And so she had to more or less just put me in place and give me things. And then the way she taught me was that she would arrange an arrangement. She would bring to me materials and she would arrange it. And then I was to draw it. And then she was, or I was to take it down. And then I was to put it back and then see if I could put it back the way that she had put it. And that's how you, and then she would look at what I had done and then she would adjust it to bring it to the perfection that she had in mind. And um, also during the course of this, I had to sit on my knees and, and the first lesson, I just couldn't do it at all. And by the end of the year, I was then able to sit properly and and so I learned a whole way to be in relation to her and uh, acquired this sensibility for flowers by, by doing this. So that's just one example of, of what could happen. Um, Ken and I have a disagreement, and I think it can be both and in this case. He thinks that if you are in a relationship over a long period of time, you will acquire a sort of a reduction in your endeavors to develop processes together. And I think you can become richer in, and more daring in the ways in which you can develop relationships in a process together. And I think really it's probably both ways. That with some people you have relationships that are so redundant and sort of boring and meaningless, but you just keep them up in that old way that you do things. And then in other relationships, you have flowering that goes on. And, and the idea of the flowering is, is to help yourself to flower would mean that you would take some risks in trying to enlarge the spectrum of possible ways that you might engage someone in a relationship. So those are the things I think are the highlights of our and, and we call this butterfly, um, the person becomes, this is another key term, um, a multi-being. And so it, it fights against the idea that we are sort of internally having this self core that has to be discovered and is, is strong and stable and something that we don't mess around with. And, and this is an alternative vision. And the, um, the type of multi-being that you exercise is partly by the context you're in and partly by the other that you're engaging with. And um, you can become sort of the better or the worse person depending on this whole confluence of processes and context. Would you like to add anything? Probably another hour. Yeah, yeah. But you're not going to. Thank you. Thank you. We, we were doing streaming. We were doing streaming. Now we're.